I'm thrilled to see the amount of people that have turned out this evening to support Lee and support the Beckler Museum. And I was thinking today, through the years, I've been doing this, well, in January, we'll have our 30th anniversary exhibition. But I've shown many national, international, important artists. But there's something for me really, really special about Lee Hall's paintings. And there's something really special about Lee. I'm not gonna say what it is. <laughs> As you look at these paintings, please don't look at them, well do look at them for their color and their form and their shape and their beauty. But also, I think Lee is one of the more intellectual painters I've ever known. The works have a, a, are composed and in such a manner that they take on an importance above and beyond just their first level beauty. And I hope everybody will look at them and realize that. Um, I want to thank the Beckler Museum for giving me the opportunity to represent Lee's work. Uh, John Boyer is with us, the director of the Beckler Museum of Modern Art. If there are any of you who have not been there, shame on you and you should go tomorrow. <laughs> um, and I think John's going to take a moment to tell us how this all came about. John? Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. When I walked in, I guess it was a little after 5.30, there were only a handful of people here, so the Space was very much defined by these wonderful paintings and these wonderful collages. Now, I've seen these works in far less regal and beautifully installed settings. <laughs> I've seen them by the score, arranged and being photographed and being assessed for their conservation. I've had the great pleasure to see some of these in Lee's own home, which was a great blessing, I can assure you. But tonight, they just look so stunning. So the first thing I want to do is thank Gerald and his team for doing such a great job and taking on this wonderful opportunity on behalf of the museum and our community, and also on behalf of Lee's great legacy. So Gerald, thank you very much. This is really wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And of course, the next thing I just want to say is how great Lee is. She's going to hate everything I'm going to say. That's right. She's going to hate everything I'm going to say. So she just don't, don't look at her face. <laughs> turn around. Turn around. So it was just now, a little over four years ago, when we learned of Lee's interest in the Beckler Museum of Modern Art. This was, of course, well before we were open to the public. In fact, it was before the time the staff had even moved into the building. The building was at the tail end of its construction. But when Lee learned about this new commitment to things modern and all the great intellectual aspects that connect themselves to this remarkable period of painting in this country in particular, she was, to say the least, intrigued. And then I know as she heard about the remarkable generosity of Andreas Beckler and his family and the commitment that our community had already shown before the museum even opened to this proposition, she wanted to learn more. One thing led to another, and ultimately it led to her making her work a gift to the museum. And the proceeds from these wonderful sales will end up supporting in perpetuity the good work of the museum for all of our different audiences now and in the years to come. So such is the prescience and the sophistication of the way she thinks about how art works in our lives. And this comes first because she's a great artist in her own right, and part of that fabulous New York school in the years after World War II, working closely with good friends like Bill and Elaine de Kooning and many others. And believe me, I've read the reviews from that period of her work, and there was no doubting the importance and the new arc of this career. But that was only part of who Lee is. She's also a historian and an academic, and a great leader, ultimately becoming the president of the Rhode Island School of Design for many years. 
It is rare to find a career with this much richness and variety, but especially this much richness and variety at such a high level of accomplishment. And so I would echo Gerald's observation that when you're looking at these works, think not only of their color and their shape and their form and the fabulous sense of composition, the settings that are being displayed for us, think of the lens through which all of this was seen, and it's a lens called Lee Hall. Now, the final thing I'll end with is an anecdote. About two weeks ago, I had the pleasure to spend the night up at Lee's beautiful home and studio in South Hadley, Massachusetts. And some of you will not be shocked to learn that I was running late, and so upon my arrival, <laughs> I got there just in time for dinner, which was glorious, and anybody who knows Lee knows that she's one of the best cooks you will ever meet in your life. <laughs> And it was Greek lamb and all these extraordinary things, and we started talking, and you know, she forced me to drink two bottles of wine with her, and the, <laughs> the next thing you know, it was after midnight, and I just pulled myself upstairs and just fell asleep. In the morning, it was like 7.30, I was agitated, agitated got to get on the road, and so I come right back down. Breakfast is already spread out on the table. Lee's already been up and walked her beautiful little dog, Ava. That's my only regret is that Ava isn't with us here tonight. <laughs> Maybe next time. And by the way, I have a picture of Ava on my phone if you want to see her for all you dog lovers, which I do. But why I tell that story is just to share with you, she is so much more than a glittering resume. She is a fabulous person. She's become a good friend. All of us in this room tonight have so much to be grateful for for the decision that she's made. So Lee, thank you again thank for everything. You're here. here. For, for my part, I'm very happy to be in this community and to have my work find a home here. Um, I like to think that um, I'm a teacher <laughs> and that this will go away toward convincing us all that we best realize our humanity. We only fully realize it through the arts. And it doesn't matter about the cutting budgets, all of that. We need the arts. And I'm glad to share it with you. Thank you. <laughs>